All right, cheers, Internet, and welcome to the Modern Horror Ramble on Paranormal Activity 2, the second one. All right, so the story in Paranormal Activity 2 is Katie's sister, Christy, has just had her, her first child, and it's a, a boy named Hunter. And the movie starts with them bringing him home, and they have a little bit of the tour of the house, and they introduce all the characters, and then they jump cut to a year later and um, hang out a little bit more, and then the, the house gets broken into, at which point they get a ton of security cameras. So it's basically a stock formula where weird things sort of happen to the family members, mostly individually, until it comes to a head and actually uh, Christy gets possessed. But because of uh, the magic housekeeper, they just happen to have, you know, the, the correct right to pass the curse off to a blood relative of Christy, which just so happens to be Katie. And then we get the first movie. After the entire first movie plays out, um, Katie comes back to Christie's house, kills Christy, kills Daniel, and takes Hunter and, and goes off into the night. And that's, that's the movie. Um, where it fits into the whole of the, the paranormal activity sort of wider mythology is that this is obviously kind of the beginning of the modern portion of events, is the birth of Hunter and his first birthday. His first birthday is basically when everything really starts to happen with the two sisters being being haunted by the demon. At some point, Allie and her boyfriend Brad are looking, uh, doing demonic research on the internet, and they come across mentions of people making deals with demons for wealth and power, and they think that maybe, you know, Christie's great-grandmother or something may have made one of these deals. And they also find out later that Hunter happens to be the first male child on Christie's side of the family, in like four or five generations. So now we have an explanation and a motivation for the demon. Why is it targeting the family? Well, it's trying to get at Hunter. And obviously it sets up what will become Paranormal Activity 4 later on when Katie takes off with Hunter. It suffers a little bit from sequel bloat. Uh, the first movie only had the two characters. The second one has the husband, wife, uh, new son, daughter, boyfriend, nanny, dog. Um, and there's like six or seven cameras. I think there's six security cameras and one handheld camera. So it's like they amped it up a lot. And I don't think that it really did the movie any favors. Because the original Paranormal Activity was really good because it just had the one camera shot in the corner, just, you know, static on the tripod and pointing down the hallway, and, and it would just sit there and you would have to look around the frame to try to figure out what was going on. But this one has so many cameras that they kind of get a little bit, you know, too slick, and it, it jumps from here to here to here to here, and you don't really get to, you know, sit and focus and, and creep yourself out as much as you did in the first one. So... What little actually does happen is just sort of quick jumps and then back to normal. The only real good part of the movie is kind of towards the end, maybe the last 20 minutes of the prequel part of the story, where they're on kind of the night vision camera and they're trying to do the, the pseudo-exorcism thing that they do. But as a movie, it's kind of dull. You know, I had a lot of problems with it. Um, a lot of the actual paranormal activity could very well be mistaken for just regular old average anything. You know, the, not a lot of it is actually very paranormal. You know, it's, it's not like the footprints and all the creepy stuff that happens in, in the original paranormal activity. It's just, you know, the hot tub is left on, door was open. So I, I think that if it wasn't a Paranormal Activity movie, I really wouldn't have paid much attention to it at all. As it stands, you know, it's an okay movie. I mean, I've seen way worse in found footage. I've also seen, obviously, way better, but it's a pretty average movie. They had they have some of the unfortunate pitfalls of found footage, and a lot of it feels very traditional movie. Um, which is kind of the opposite of how found footage should be. You know, one of, the, one of the main problems I have is that they go handy cam way too often and they cut way too often. Um, so obviously when you're, when you have a handheld camera, you have to, in a found footage movie, you have to kind of give the character a reason to have the camera and to be filming whatever it is they happen to be filming. When you don't have that, 
it kind of points out how artificial the whole thing is, and and that's when audiences tend to have problems with the movie. And you know, Paranormal Activity two kind of tends to do that. Not a whole lot, but more than I would like. They have, I think, a great mechanism with all these security cameras to have like a slow roll between security cameras, and you can kind of you know cut away from one shot before something was about to happen, but you kind of saw it starting. And I think that that had potential, but they just kind of lost it in the editing room by basically being kind of a stock Hollywood horror movie, which was a little disappointing. Um, It was a bit of a letdown, but it's not horrible. You know, nothing during the runtime of the movie ever made me want to turn it off and walk away. It's just... It doesn't leave a a very lasting impression. So I guess that's all I have to say about Paranormal Activity 2 off the cuff. Uh, Cheers, folks, and I'll catch you later for uh, Paranormal Activity 3.